Good day, I'm in the kitchen as you can see and today I am going to be making a butter bean casserole. Now we've made butter bean casseroles before, we've made the butter bean and cider casserole which went down extremely well and uh, we found out from that that cider in the States is very often non-alcoholic where cider in the UK obviously is alcoholic and a number of other people have made things like uh, Greek stews with Gigante's butter beans. In fact, Vivi made one very recently, um, which looked absolutely gorgeous. We use our Gigante's butter beans a lot. We grow them. And last year, I think we got two and a half kilos of dried beans from our plants. So did really, really well. And they were really nice and, and um clean and chunky as well so that was great. Today I'm making more of a British casserole and I'm going to put dumplings in it at the end or on it maybe at the end or as we used to call them in Guernsey we used to call them doughboys. So why is this different? Well I really do even though I'm veggie I hanker after the wonderful sort of chicken stews that mum used to do when we were kids and I love the sort of slightly soupy texture of some stews and that's what I'm trying to get with this one. With the uh, butter bean inside a casserole that's a very creamy dish where the butter beans break down quite considerably. In this one I don't want the butter beans to break down um, anywhere near as much but I do want some texture to the liquor, the liquid in which um, the beans are going to sit with celery and carrots, some parsnip and potatoes. And because I want some, some texture in that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up the potatoes in two different ways. I'm going to do some which are going to be relatively finely diced and then I'm going to do some more which are chunky. Everything will cook through but what I'm hoping is that the ones that are more finely diced, or are diced in fact, will break down quite considerably and help thicken the stew. So now I'm going to show you the ingredients we're using. These are our butter beans, which we grew last year. They're gigantes. And you can see that some of them are sort of quite nice and large compared to some other butter beans which you get which are sort of really just small thumbnail size. On the left here is 500 grams of dried butter beans and on the right here you can see these are much bigger. Uh, on the right here is the same quantity as on the left so 500 grams but these have been soaked overnight and then they have been cooked for an hour and there is still some texture in them you can't quite crush them with your fingers there is give and there is texture so we cook them to maybe the just beyond al dente and then they're going to have the rest of the cooking time with the other ingredients here are the ingredients for this butter bean stew as we said before, 500 grams of butter beans, which have been soaked overnight and then cooked for about an hour till just before they're al dente. Celery, onions, garlic. Here's some of our parsnips, which have been um, frozen. I've just taken these out of the freezer. Carrots, potatoes. Then at the back, there's two um, bottles 500 ml of a golden ale and pepper then we've got bouillon powder here or vegetable stock powder obviously you can use vegetable stock cubes if you like and mixed herbs I'm going to prep all these ingredients now and show you how they they are going to be going into the pan because this is going to be quite a chunky stew apart from two of the potatoes which will be cut smaller 
Here we have our prepped carrots and celery. You can see that they're quite chunky. If I grab over here a butter bean. You can compare that. So these are quite chunky. What I want is at the end of this, I want people to be able to pick up a, a bit of carrot or a bit of celery or parsnip on their fork or a bean. So yeah, quite chunky. The potatoes, one to this side again, quite chunky. The ones this side, some you can see are much finer, not finer, but they're they're chopped much smaller. The reason is I want these to break down and thicken our stew. The parsnips, these have been chunked. So you can see similar size now because these are steamed these are actually going to go in right at the um almost at the end of cooking sorry bang finally i've what i've done is i've um quartered or cut each onion into six once these cook they will sort of break down and these will open up and the garlic here, you can see, is quite chunky as well. It's not finely diced. It doesn't need to be because of the cooking time. All right, now we're going to get cooking. Just turning the heat on. Warming the pan up a bit. I didn't mention that we're going to add olive oil. You want to about a tablespoon of olive oil. Now we're adding our onions in. Turning this on to a low heat now, and I'm going to pop the lid on for five minutes. So that's five minutes. You can see that it started um, loosening up all the leaves, well, not leaves, but the layers are beginning to break up. I'm adding a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of water. And the lid's on for another five minutes. All right, that started really softening now. Now we're going to add in our carrots and celery. We're also going to add in our stock cube, or in this case, vegetable stock powder and our herbs. We're using three teaspoons, three heat teaspoons of stock powder and two teaspoons, two heat teaspoons of herbs.
again I'm adding about four tablespoons of water. Just turning up the heat to get that back up to steaming. which it just is, lid back on again, another five minutes <coughs> on a lower heat though. So that's about five minutes. And vegetables aren't cooked at this point, but are on the way great colours already there. If you want to have a darker stew then you can actually cook the onions down until they start taking on colour which will give you a darker stew. Now we're adding in the potato. Adding our butter beans. Now we're adding our ale. So we turn the heat up to get this up to a boil. Now we're adding another half litre of water, but in our case, this is vegetable water that we kept after steaming some vegetables the other day. As you can see, that looks quite liquid because we're going to be adding dumplings to this, we do want it nice and liquid. So we're going to bring that up to a boil now and then pop it on a simmer for about 45 minutes, giving it a stir every 15 minutes. Okay, so this has now been cooking for 45 minutes on a simmer. You can see a little burble there in the middle, I hope. You can see that the some of the butter beans have broken down. I'll just grab That potato, the little potato, is cooked. Those are just al dente. I popped the parsnips in just five minutes ago. Let me just taste it. Oh yeah, that's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. That is now cooked. But we are going to, this is actually being cooked for 
dinner that we're having with friends tomorrow. So I'm going to turn off the heat now, pop the lid back on, just let that cool. And then tomorrow we'll be heating it up and adding our dumplings or dough boys. So we'll be back to you then. Bye. Well, I'm back in the kitchen to make dumplings for the stew. But actually, it's quite a few days later than the original video, as we had a break in Wales and we took that stew to Wales and meant to make the video of the dumplings in Wales, but it didn't happen. So I'm just going to show you the ingredients and get on with making the dumplings. We have 300 grams of plain flour, 160 grams of vegetable suet. If you want to use butter or marge or another alternative, you can do. Cold water, I'm going to use maybe about six tablespoons. Salt, pepper and two teaspoons of baking powder. So we're putting two teaspoons of baking powder into the flour. Just put a bit more. Give it a good mix. You don't want the baking powder all in one part. If you want to sift this, that would be great, but I'm not sifting it. Black pepper. that together then in goes the vegetable suet obviously if you're not vegetarian you can use traditional suet that's coated all of the fat in a little layer of flour putting four tablespoons of cold water in to begin with I'm going to need more than that You want it so that it all comes together and different flowers will require different amounts of water. We need a bit more yet in there. Again, make sure you've got clean fingers before you start. still need a bit yeah now whilst you're doing this you need to make sure that your stew is right up to heat because this is going to this needs to go into a hot stew almost there see that's mainly come together right going to get the stew out of the oven here is our stew Put 
Lovely. And with our mixture, we're just going to use our hands. You can roll these into a ball if you want, but I don't. Mainly because I can't be bothered. Let's try and get eight. There we are. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of that. As you can see, they've sunk a little. That's absolutely fine. The heat of the cooking will make them swell up. So this is now going back in the oven. And the oven's at 180 degrees centigrade. And that is going to cook for another half an hour. But with the lid off. It's going in exactly like this. So the stew has now been cooking in the oven for half an hour. If you wanted to cook it on the top of a hob you can do that but it won't go brown on the top unless you pop it under the grill at the end. But anyway let me take it out now and we'll see what it's like. There we are. Well, that looks great to me. Um, it's nicely browned. You can hear that the top is crunchy and it's reduced down a little. I'm not sure if you can just see there, but it's reduced down about half a centimetre because obviously we've had the lid off. And we're going to tuck into this now. It looks absolutely fabulous. We'll put a picture up of, of it on a plate. But now we're going to get on and eat it. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you like what we do. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.